Hello there everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. I'm Stephanie Haney and today is Tuesday, March 15th. Thank you for joining me here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. This right here, 3 News Now, this is where we talk about the stories that matter most to you here in Northeast Ohio because the stories we talk about here are the stories that you are clicking on, reading, and sharing from our website and our app. And we'll start today with a story that several of you were asking me about in the comments yesterday. The constitutional carry bill, it has been signed into law by Governor Mike DeWine. That happened yesterday. So this is the law that will allow adults to carry concealed firearms without training classes or background checks. And that goes into effect. This is a big question a lot of you are asking. June 12th, that's when it goes into effect. So it was signed into law, and what this, will, this law will now do is it will eliminate the requirement that individuals promptly notify police officers that they're carrying a concealed weapon, and it also makes concealed weapons permits optional for anyone legally allowed to carry a gun. Now, there might still be situations where someone might want to go ahead and get that permit. For example, gun owners can still apply for that permit because if you obtain a permit to carry a concealed weapon here in Ohio, then that would be effective in states that have reciprocity agreements recognizing those permits. And here in Ohio, if you have an encounter with a police officer, the law requires only that people confirm that they are carrying a weapon if asked by an officer. So removing that affirmative obligation to share that information. But if an officer does ask you if you're carrying a weapon, you do still have a legal duty to answer truthfully and provide that information. Now we have an update on the video that was shared widely of a man using a racial slur and you can see him attacking people in the video. This is a Kent man, the man that has been identified by police as 26 year old Andrew Walls. He is now being sued by one of the people that he is accused of attacking. Cameron Morgan filed a lawsuit last week. This was in Summit County Common Pleas Court. And she is seeking compensatory and punitive damages. Punitive damages are the kind of damages that are meant to punish someone for bad behavior. Compensatory damages are the kind of damages that people seek to be paid back for things that they actually had to pay for. So she's seeking in excess of $25,000, so more than $25,000. The lawsuit says that Cameron Morgan suffered personal injuries, incurred medical expenses, was required to seek medical care and more as a result of the alleged acts by Andrew Walls. The video was recorded on February 28th and it was shared wildly on social media. It shows the person identified as Walls using the N-word and then punching Morgan. Now Morgan went to the hospital. She had a busted lip and a concussion after that incident. She told 3 News that she was out with friends in Highland Square when she came across a man who was calling people the N-word. She said she tried to get him to stop and that's when he sucker punched her. Now police later determined that Walls, who has been publicly associated with the Proud Boys in the past, then hit a second woman. So there have been two assault charges filed against him, as well as a charge of using weapons while intoxicated. And then earlier this month, Akron police told 3 News that the FBI is also investigating the case to determine if Walls should be charged with a hate crime. Now we have an update from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Ohio and Drug Enforcement Administration officials. There have been three men who have been arrested in connection with an alleged Cleveland drug trafficking operation with roots in Mexico. So these men are accused of shipping 1,100 pounds of cocaine from Mexico. The people who have been arrested are Christopher Fickland of Cleveland Heights, Robert Atkinson of Cleveland, and David Gomez Orantio. They're accused of being part of this organization to ship cocaine to Cleveland from Mexico and then sending $13 million back to Mexico in drug trafficking proceeds. Fickland and Atkinson, the Cleveland area natives, they were arrested on Tuesday morning and they had an additional 22 pounds of cocaine that was found during the arrest of Atkinson. Now, Gomez Arantio, he's a native of Mexico. He was arrested in connection at the U.S.-Mexico border over the weekend. He had $20,000 on him at the time of his arrest. So what these people are accused of doing took place in the summer of 2020. Gomez Arantio is accused of shipping cocaine to a Cleveland warehouse, which was owned by Ficklin. And then Ficklin is accused of supplying that cocaine to Atkinson and others to be redistributed in the Cleveland area. More arrests are actually expected as a result of this investigation, which has been going on for years.
as we have more information available, we will bring that to you. Now an update on what's happening in Ukraine as a result of the Russian invasion. Russia is stepping up things in Kyiv. This happened today, smashing apartments, a subway station. Civilians in 2,000 cars left Mariupol, and that was along a humanitarian corridor. Now these corridors have not been very successful in the past because there have been situations where they actually have not been protected as they were expected to be. But this is believed to be the biggest evacuation yet from Mariupol, that seaport city. Now on the diplomacy side of things, there's another round of talks that has taken place between Russia and Ukraine. And right now the number of people who have fled Ukraine is now more than three million. So that number going up and up and up. Before dawn today, there were large explosions across Kyiv. Ukrainian authorities said that there were artillery strikes and that Russia's assault on the capital appeared to be more systematic, edging closer and closer to the center of Kyiv, the capital there. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that attacks hit four multi-story buildings in the city, that dozens of people were killed. There was shelling, there was a huge fire in a 15-story apartment building, and it was a very frantic rescue effort from there. Now, this is on the 20th day of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. They're targeting the Western District of Kyiv and disrupting what had been a bit calm after Russian forces were stopped in the early days of this invasion. Now, the U.S. says that the U.N., excuse me, the United Nations, says close to 700 civilians in Ukraine have been confirmed killed, but they believe that true number is probably much, much higher. And people are trying to figure out how to help. There's a Cleveland doctor who has talked to 3 News about her experience at the Ukraine-Poland border. Lots of these refugees heading to the Poland border, okay? So two days after Russia invaded Ukraine, Dr. Laura Bukovina, who is a urologist from University Hospitals, went to the Ukraine-Poland border. She said she spent most of her time in the medical tent helping people get the medical care as they were crossing. She spoke to us from Philadelphia via Zoom. That's where she's on a fellowship there. And she said the biggest need right now for refugees is medical supplies. She said a lot of people had to leave with whatever they could carry, and that didn't necessarily include things like blood pressure medication, insulin. So there are groups, and one of those groups is the Cleveland Maiden Association. And people who have been helping there have been sending supplies to Ukraine. They say they need everything from antibiotics to over-the-counter medicines. They need more. So collections are being done at the Pokrova Ukraine Catholic Church. They said they don't need clothing, okay? The only clothing-related item that they might need is thermal underwear to keep people warm as they get out of Ukraine across the border. We have a list of needed medical items on WKYC.com that are being collected by the Cleveland Maiden Association. If you are so inclined, you can help out there. And this week on a special edition of the Three Things to Know podcast, I talked with UK Browns fan Paul Brown. So if you're a Browns fan, you might be familiar with him. He lives in London, but he travels all across the country going to Browns games. Well, now he's traveling from London to Poland and into Ukraine. And what he's been doing is collecting donations and he is bringing supplies for refugee children that are in hostile sort of refugee camps in Poland. And then he also this week is going to go into Ukraine along the front lines and deliver medical gauze to people that need it. He said that's what's being asked for. That's what he has been informed they need on the front lines in Ukraine. And he's taking a lot of donations from Cleveland people. He showed me a list of the donors to one of his fundraisers. He has two separate fundraisers going on, one for the medical supplies. He says that's largely corporate donors, but individual donors have been donating to provide things for the refugee children that are currently being housed in Poland, which, by the way, NPR reports that 100,000 people per day are moving from Ukraine to Poland. Paul Brown described that as the full contents of First Energy Stadium and Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. You know, so that's, that's a lot of people every single day and i looked at his fundraisers the people who have donated to the fundraiser that he has put on in partnership with someone named julian klinger who has feet on the ground in poland some uh some names that i recognize here some cleveland sports fans so those big donors coming from cleveland people they tell me i talked with one of the people who confirmed that yes they had made a donation and they told me that yeah you know it's tough to figure out how to help and they felt comfortable donating to someone that they knew via the internet to try and make a difference in Ukraine and Poland. So if you want to hear my conversation with Paul Brown, 
You can find that at wkyc.com slash three things to know. There are also links there if you're interested in checking out that fundraiser and also a link to to other restaurants and organizations that are accepting donations here in the Northeast Ohio area if you're looking for something that you can do tangibly here at home. Now, in different Cleveland Browns news, there are talks of the Cleveland Browns showing more and more interest in Houston Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson. The Browns are expected to meet with him today in Houston, and it is not without its controversy. There are a lot of differing opinions from Browns fans on whether they would welcome Deshaun Watson being signed here in Cleveland. So the situation is, is that he had spent the last year in Houston didn't uh, he sat for the entire season he had requested a trade and is currently while well, he was he was being investigated for accusations of inappropriate behavior and sexual assault from 22 women now on friday the criminal justice system a grand jury said it would not indict watson on criminal charges that means that grand jury took a look at certain information that was available and decided not to move forward with charges and a trial against deshaun watson He's not out of the woods yet, though, because there are civil lawsuits against him and the NFL could still impose penalties. Even so, Brown's talking potentially with Deshaun Watson in Houston, and also he was expected to answer questions under oath today about those civil suits. That was before meeting with the Browns. Something the Browns did definitively do today is they released center J.C. Treader. This is after releasing wide receiver Jarvis Landry yesterday. So this is another veteran. J.C. Treader is the president of the NFL Players Association, and in releasing him, the Browns are saving $8 million in cap space. It's a money move. It's a money move, folks. The Browns are trying to free up space in a salary-capped league. So with him no longer on the team, Nick Harris will now move into Cleveland's starting lineup as the team's new center. He's been Treader's primary backup for each of the past two seasons. Now, speaking of backups, this is not something that anyone wants to feel like. And if you've been following along as I've been recapping The Bachelor this season, because we've had several people from Ohio who are in the running for the love of Clayton Eckerd, you saw last night that Clayton Eckerd's mom referred to one of the women as a consolation prize, and the way Clayton was sort of treating them made it seem like he was viewing them as a backup. Ohio University graduate Rachel Rakia and Gabby Wendy, two of the contestants who were left, the only two, presumably, who are left at the moment, were blindsided by Clayton at the rose ceremony where it was just the two of them left, and he invited them to meet his parents because he told them both that he was in love with both of them and that he was also in love with Susie Evans, the woman who had left because she said she could not continue on with him after he had told other women that he loved them and after he had been intimate with those other two women. Now, Rachel and Gabby did not seem to be upset about the intimacy part, but they were very upset about him saying that he was in love with all three of those women, including the one woman who had left. In the end, though, they did decide to forgive him and move on to meet his parents. And then after, after they met his parents, Clayton said he got some clarity and he still wanted to make a go of it with Susie. So that brings me back to that backup comment. In my opinion, this is my opinion, I want to be very clear about that, it seems pretty unfair to continue on with Rachel and Gabby if he's trying to pursue Susie, who has left at this point in time. We are now at the stage of proposals. Tonight is the live finale. We will see what happens. Here's hoping for the best for our Ohio University graduate, Rachel Rakia, also fellow contestant Gabby Wendy and Susie Evans, and Clayton Eckerd too. But he seems, uh, he seems very conflicted. Here's hoping it turns out okay for everyone. We're told this is an unspoilable season and that no one knows what's going to happen in the live finale tonight. So uh, I'll be watching, and uh, we'll recap it tomorrow, and we'll go from there. We'll tell you what happened. Now, here's some exciting news here in Cleveland. The Roost Apartment Hotel has opened today at Cleveland's May Company building. This is a historic building. This is a Philadelphia-based hospitality company. This is their first time having a location outside of the Philadelphia area, and it's on historic Euclid Avenue in downtown Cleveland. It's got 62 apartments, community spaces, and guest amenities for people who are looking for short and long-term stays, so check that out if you're in the area. And another thing you can check out is Akron Zoo has welcomed a new snow leopard. This is a one-year-old leopard. Her name is Mila, and she has come from the Milwaukee County Zoo in Wisconsin. She's coming to the Akron Zoo after the passing of 
the female snow leopard that was already there in December. I believe her name is pronounced Shanti. She passed away in December. So this was based on a recommendation from the snow leopard species survival plan to bring Mila here from Milwaukee. And it's hopeful that she will mate with Tai Lung, who is a male snow leopard that is at the Akron Zoo. So that's a recommendation that they will have in the future and see if that works out. So right now, Tai Lung is in the snow leopard habitat daily. But once Mila makes her debut this spring, they will alternate days because snow leopards are actually solitary animals. And here's what they have to say about her personality. She is sassy and feisty, which is exactly what you want in your snow leopard. Akron Zoo officials say that she is talkative and she always has to get the last word in, which I guess would be pretty helpful if you're a solitary animal because you're the only one doing the talking. So if you want to check her out, she'll be in that snow leopard habitat in the spring. Welcome to Akron, Mila. All right, that's it for your three news now update today for Tuesday, March 15th. I will see you all back here tomorrow with more three news now.